Guys, Airbnb is at it again. They have created a new software with combined some of their new policies is banning hosts or their listings at an unprecedented rate. This is absolutely nuts. And a lot of you have been asking for this video. I did a lot of research for this so I can give you some slides. This is big. Airbnb has bought a startup called Game Planner AI. They're using that startup along with some changes to their policy to ban hosts listings, like across the world at a record rate. It's absolutely nuts. One of our subscribers in a Facebook group posted this, um, and this is really what kind of brought this to the front. And it's happening to a lot of people. And it's such a, it's actually something we can bypass. So I'm gonna actually teach you how to get around this in this video. So if you're gonna, um, if you're having fun, please sound off in the comments uh, because I'd like to know that this is actually working because uh, I don't do a lot of live streams. So let me get you guys brought up to speed. There's some other changes that they made. So this is one big cocktail of stuff that as of the end of March is giving Airbnb like unilateral permission to just drop axes on hosts. It's crazy. So first Airbnb also made an update to their um, extenuating circumstances policy. The name is now called the major disruptive events policy. And as you can read here, the goal is to change how far reaching people can cancel. Um, that's pretty much the, the skinny of it. So let's give you some more details. What's covered on this is um, declared public health emergencies, something like COVID. If you guys remember during COVID, they didn't have pandemic written into their policy. So they were essentially able to, or not able, they were forced to pay for cancellations. But a lot of you who were hosts during COVID, you remember they gave all of our guests cancellations and then they gave us all back maybe 25% of what they gave guests. Now, the window of time is pretty much rapidly closing. I think we're at that four year limit that if you wanted to take Airbnb to arbitration for the money that they owed you for those cancellations, um, your time might be up right now. There might not be any more time for you to actually claw that money back. Sorry to say. Um, but there was a window of time where you could have got paid for all those cancellations because their cancellation policy did not include pandemic. So government travel restrictions, military based stuff, uh, large scale outages of essential utilities. This one's going to suck because a large scale outage of essential utilities may include electricity. So let's say there's a storm and all the power goes out. I don't know for how long Airbnb is going to count power going down as a thing to cancel, but here in uh, Dallas and it's happened in Houston, it's happened everywhere where the grid system goes down for a few hours, something can happen, but that is large scale. And if it happens long enough, um, Airbnb might let people cancel for that reason. And then of course, natural disasters, <laughs> of course. So, but what's not covered, let's keep moving, keep this truck going, is events that impact the guest or their ability to travel, but not the reservation location. So if your house is here in Dallas and somebody has something in Baltimore that keeps them from leaving, as long as it didn't happen in Dallas, you're okay. They can't cancel for that. Um, unexpected injury or illness. So that of course then starts to kind of compete with things like COVID. COVID is no longer unexpected. We expect to catch COVID. We expect to catch the flu. So they can't cancel for things like those. Um, government obligations like jury duty. Sorry, you, you booked, you got to pay. Um, Non-binding travel advisories, uh, uh, cancellations or rescheduling of events like a uh, music festival gets canceled. You still, you still paid for the Airbnb. You can't cancel for that. Um, tra transportation disruptions unrelated to the to a covered event, such as the airline insolvency or something like that. So it protects hosts in a lot of ways, which is really, really good. We like that. Um, so now keep moving um, to things that they've done. Um, hosts that have instant book. This is actually something I think I might have skipped ahead, but I want you to see this one shot because it's going to be part of the big puzzle. Hope you guys are keeping up with me on this. So Airbnb's updated their cancellation policies. They've updated their extenuating circumstances policy. They've added a new policy that I'm about to tell you about that links with this AI and screws people over. They've also increased the, you guys might remember, they've increased all the, the amounts that hosts have to pay when hosts initiate a cancellation. Verbo did the same thing. So they both changed their cancellation policies almost in tandem where if you cancel right before a guest arrives, you could pay 50% of that reservation amount uncapped. It's pretty nuts. And so this is a way for us to bypass some of Airbnb's policy changes. This is something that I believe they just added that I highlighted in blue. So a host is able to cancel an instant book reservation under a couple circumstances. And you see here, the guest makes it clear that they'll likely break the house rules, which you can bait somebody into confessing to if you know they're going to do it. And if the guest has several unfavorable reviews or lack of profile information that concerns the host, this language is so important. 
the host is allowed or may be able to cancel, but may be able to cancel is like permission. You can interpret it as yes, you may, okay? And several means at least two. If they have two unfavorable reviews, you could say this guest has two bad reviews, I can't host them. That allows you to get out of that reservation or lack of profile information. Now, Airbnb made this update during the winter release where us hosts, we can write where our favorite places to go are, quirks about ourselves. I think they've done something similar for guests. If the guest is not participating in Airbnb's like self-disclosure and they're minimal in their profile and don't really say anything that shows that they're human or trustworthy, you can use the lack of, just sheer lack of profile information as an excuse to cancel. So hosts, this is a gray area that if you had to cancel and you didn't want to pay 50% of the guest cancellation fee because Airbnb is going to be really mean about it, this is a way that you can get that done. Just keep that in your back pocket. So now, more things for you. Um, if a host cannot, this is, this is addressing a rumor. Sorry, I, I made these slides a while ago. There was a rumor that hosts could cancel if their listing changed. That's what one person made in response to Airbnb's like disaster policy update. And it's actually not true. If you no longer have a pool, or if your pool is broken, or your stove needs repair, or something like that, and or not stove needs repair, maybe your pool being broken, those things are things that you might be able to say, hey, Airbnb, a guest broke the stove or broke the pool. Those you could cancel because a guest did that damage. But if your listing just no longer has access to a pool, just something like that, you still actually do pay cancellation penalties. So if a, the, this was a misinterpretation, somebody read this and misinterpreted it, if a host cannot honor a reservation, regardless of the reason, they still have to um, cancel in a timely manner. This is actually more so to address that there are hosts that try to convince guests to cancel, and Airbnb is actually keeping notes of this. In their new circumvention policy, I think they address this too, you trying to get a host, or you trying to get a guest to cancel to circumvent the cancellation policy repercussions is a violation of their new policy. So there's a lot of rumors on what you can do with canceling. If you change your listing, no, you cannot cancel, but there is something about changing your listing that we can use that for. So let's keep this ripping. This is fun. This, this new stream deck is so cool. So Airbnb added a new circumvention policy. That's what it's called. Get ready to take some notes, guys. I'm going to put it up on the screen. It's a lot of words. Just, you know, maybe take a screenshot, get ready to load it. This was end of March. The circumvention policy is designed to keep you from creating a new listing, creating a new account, or anything to bypass Airbnb's uh, settings. If you have bad reviews or if Airbnb suspended your listing, if you create a new listing or a new profile to circumvent their judgment, they can remove your listing. They can remove your account if you're like doing this to circumvent. So Airbnb has taken this new Game Planner AI software and added this new policy, and there is an AI crawling all over Airbnb right now doing photo matching looking for highly similar photos. Now what they're doing is they're looking for people who've created new listings and then they go and look for other instances of that same listing with similar photos and they're looking for adverse action. They're looking for negative reviews, um, they're looking for suspended listings, all sorts of stuff. So the guy that I just showed you the photo here, what happened was that Airbnb used this AI to crawl, found his listings and suspended his duplicates. Absolutely nuts, isn't it? Make sure that's, that's correct. So all right, let's go back to nine. There we go. There, I'm, I'm learning how to use the thing. So there is a key phrase in here. I'm gonna give you guys the hack. This is so cool. Um, I've actually tested this on my students already <laughs> before I came public. That's why this video didn't come out sooner is uh, I had students who had similar issues and I've tested this out. I've actually secret shopped Airbnb too. I actually went online and I gave them a hypothetical scenario. I'm like, hey, I need to do something with my listing and I need to create a new one. I just wanna make sure I'm allowed to. And I quoted the circumvention policy. And then I said, I'm afraid to make a new listing because your policy says this. And I have in writing Airbnb's representatives saying that what I'm about to tell you to do is allowed. Okay, so hang in. So here it is. I have to lean in to read this. Uh, user may not um, uh, create a duplicate account. Let's go down to create a duplicate account section. A user may not create a duplicate account or circumvent enforcement measures by Airbnb. Um, the user may not create a duplicate account or circumvent negative consequences. Um, it says, there's a part of here that says, in order to circumvent. So a host may not create a duplicate listing or any other of their properties um, to circumvent enforcement measures. So that phrase, to circumvent, is what keeps popping up. You may not create a duplicate account. 
to circumvent negative. You may not create a new listing to circumvent negative. So all you have to do is when you create a new listing, you have to be able to prove that you did it for a reason other than circumventing their policy. And I'm going to talk to you about that here in a second. So come on, number nine. It's a snail race. Did it work? Maybe this is the one. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. So they have actually made a change. This is really curious. I just had to share this too. If you notice on the bottom right, this is what their website used to look like. If you guys go back two years, I did a video on how to create a listing from scratch. Like for anybody brand new who needs to know like really how to make a good listing, that video is still super valid. But this screenshot from that video shows duplicate an existing listing. That's two years ago. The screenshot in the upper left is their new language, create from an existing listing. So they actually are trying to claw back any encouragement to duplicate listings. So the circumvention policy led to that change um, when you're creating new listings. Fun, right? And so then, oh, hey, look, a subscribe button. That's cool. All right, so the way that you can do this, my friends, if you want to create a new listing because you have bad reviews or there was a suspension or just problem with guests, you have to materially change the listing. You have to add or remove amenities. You have to change your design style, um, add beds, just and like change the sleep count. When I went and asked them like, hey, I want to do these couple things and create a new listing because the listing is going to be different. They said that this actually counts. If your listing is no longer the listing that it once was, then you can start a new listing in order to give that new, fresh, unique version of your listing a go on the platform. So you could literally take your property, switch um, like a queen bed for a king bed, and that could be sufficient enough. And you could create a new listing because your listing is materially different. You could change the design style. Instead of going from like a white theme, you could do something like dark, or you could add a hot tub. You could change some of your core settings. Like one of my students, he has two versions of a listing where one, you're allowed to do events, but the pricing is different for the one that you're allowed to do events. So now policy changes count as a different instance of the listing because it's a different use case. What you have to know, and like, I guess at the end of this bit of advice for you, what you do have to know is Airbnb's terms of service and their own interpretation of those terms of service. So if Airbnb's algorithm comes and crawls through and finds a duplicate listing of yours and shuts it down, you can go to Airbnb and go, no, look, the amenities are different. We added these three amenities and we've actually changed the design style to try to capture a different type of guest. So because we're going for a different type of customer, we created a new listing not to bypass your stuff, but because this listing is just different. Now, because this is an AI, there should be more to be said here. The AI is just a software, right? It's just a, like a, a, a series of code. It's an al algorithm. It has inputs and outputs, right? It's, it not, it's not that complex. It's not sentient like us. So when you change the wall color, you change the layout of the furniture, you shuffle the couch and stuff around and you take new photos, right? Like even at a slightly different angle, your kitchen is just slightly different. By taking new photos, that software, that image software is looking to max, uh, match up pixels. That like, if you've ever seen like an image matching software work, I, I do this stuff in Lightroom all the time to jam photos together. It's looking for patterns of pixels. It's looking for matching segments. And when you take a photo, even at a slightly different angle, the tone of the image can change, the, the lighting of the image can change, the line work can change. So you can just really take new photos of your kitchen, rearrange your couch in your living room, maybe do a different color of paint, use different lighting, like literally just use different lights and create a new instance of your photos. Brand new photos should be enough to get the algorithm confused that they don't see it as an exactly similar listing. Now, the other thing is the address. So if you're an apartment complex, this is easy because there could be like 14 apartments in your building. And so for that reason, um, the AI may also think that you have multiple apartments in the same building. So it might expect the kitchen to be, be the same. I think we actually have like the same photo of a kitchen in like five different units at a time, a lot of times. So that's another way to fool the algorithm. Um, and then the, another last point for this is, yeah, you're going to change your look. You would have to potentially change the address is something that you might have to do which is actually not possible, but you can, with apartments, it's easy to come up with a different unit count or a different indexing system, like apartment A instead of apartment one, for example, and then changing the amenities. So you change the description, change the wording, so that way you're not saying the same things. Your description about this place has to change. And then the amenities listed, where it says you got shampoo and conditioner, washer, dryer, 
just try to add a couple things. So add a crib or a pack and play. Um, add board games, add just anything that makes that amenities list not identical to your previous listing. So Airbnb's AI is taking down listings at an unprecedented rate. Um, and this is how we can fight back for now. Because I mean, I've been in this game eight years and yes, we've created new listings. Gosh, we, we've created so many new listings. And if this AI could catch up to us, um, and like, it, I mean, if, if they only, like they, they, if they only could like take down all my listings, they probably would. So with that said, guys, be careful. Um, I'm going to get you guys more information in this. It's going to be my free Facebook group, the hosts of Airbnb automated, the hosts of Airbnb automated. That's probably in the description of this video. Um, go there because that's where I do all my work. So if you guys are looking for constant updates on things and how to handle stuff outside of videos, my Facebook group is full of resources and like live stuff, like every single day of the week I'm in there. So thanks for hanging out with me on this video, guys. I very much appreciate you. And as always, my friends, I will see you on the other side.